Alright guys, part three. Last part of the video series on uh, redoing these intakes here. Alright, uh, what I'm going to go over now is taping and painting techniques. Uh, I'll talk to you a little bit about the paint that I used. And uh, then we'll take it outside so you can see it in the sunlight see what it looks like. Okay, first thing, you've etched your intake. Um, you're ready to paint it, but you need to tape it off. Um, what I do is I over tape. Uh, the biggest thing is you just want to get any of the mating surfaces or on the intake where the holes come through, the bolts that hold it onto the head. You want to make sure that you have tape that's pushed down on the back side because you do not want this paint to run through and get on your mating surfaces. Uh, it's just more work to clean it off. It takes five minutes to tape it. You know, it just it'll save you a bunch of time and a lot of headaches. So I like to do that. As well, I tape off all the um, all the holes where you're going to put bolts in or threaded plugs. Um, this just prevents, again, you having to either uh, clean out the holes or retap them if, if it's real bad. or You know, this, this stuff dries really hard and it can be very difficult um, to clean out the threads if you do manage to do, if you do manage to get the paint in there. So, you want to tape off all, like I said, all your flanges. Um, in particular, the most important ones are definitely the base, um, both the side runners where it bolts on the head and the two ends where, you, where it seats to the block. You want to have that stuff clean, taped off, and you don't want to get the POR on it. Uh, if you do, you can actually cut the edge of it and then scrape it with a razor blade, but it takes it takes forever. And if you didn't tape when you uh, etched the material, you might have etched those surfaces and it may stick and then you're kind of screwed. Then you're going to have to take some kind of uh, something with some grit to it and try to sand it off. So yeah, that, that would not be fun. Um, Alright, painting technique. Now that you've got it taped off and you're ready to paint, you can see this stuff dries hard. Just stuck to the box. What you want to do, or what I found works best, is you want to work in a logical pattern. Um, this paint, this silver POR15 with the that's impregnated with aluminum, it looks almost identical to the factory finish, the Edelbrock color. So you want to make sure that um, that you work in a logical pattern so you don't miss any spots. What I like to do is I work in all the hard areas first, like all these inside these, cra these uh, cracks, and uh, just work my way around. And I start on the bottom plane, go all the way around, then I work my way up, do the sides, you know, flip the intake around. Um, one of the things is with the aluminum and pig impregnated paint, um, what you'll find is you really have to stir it a lot because uh, it'll start to settle. And if you don't stir it constantly, you'll get like different colored, uh, a different color effect going on. You might get some streaking, so that's something to be aware of. The other thing you could do is stir it a lot and then just let it settle if you want it to all just be that one, uh, just that silver color. Um, another thing is I, I use cheap brushes. These are the throwaway, you know, you buy a whole pack of them for like a dollar or something. And uh, the hairs, the hairs, the uh, bristles do come out of them pretty easily. So a higher quality brush would probably yield you a better end result, as you can see right here. That would be a brush, brush bristle that fell out and got in my paint shop. You know, it happens. Oh well. Um, but a higher quality brush would prevent that. As you can see, this brush is uh, very hard. This is how hard this shit dries. It will not bend. See that? Uh. So you definitely don't want to use your best brush because... Yeah, I could break the brush in half before I could bend the bristles. You don't want to use the best uh, brush you have because it is going to be a throwaway after this. But a better quality than this brush would help. Um, you want to use thin coats as per the manufacturer's recommendations. And you want to come down after like say 10-15 minutes of doing it and you want to check for pooling. You will get pooling down in these areas. Uh, it's just the nature of this paint. So you want to come back and try to clean that up as best you can. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, it's an intake. I mean. You know, how perfect do you want it? Uh, my other one I I did uh, I paid more attention to because it was in the Willys, 
if it's just, you know, a motor that you're going to see more, this one you're not, but, you know, I still want it to look halfway decent, you know, if I'm going to put an intake on it, I don't want it looking all raggedy like they usually do, or that you see them a lot. So, you want to do that, and it'll get tacky after about 30 minutes, um, tacky to the touch, and you probably want to do two coats, just so you make sure you hit all the areas, and, um, you know, you want to, um, the second coat, you know, be light with it. You don't want to play with it too much after it starts to set up because that'll um, inhibit the self-leveling self -leveling characteristic of the paint. So you want to make sure that, you know, once it's set up and it's not pooled anywhere, you want to give it time to self-level and smooth out so it'll look nice. Um, another thing I was going to do on this intake, but we ended up not doing it, I don't know, I just started to fall asleep last night before I get a chance. Right here where you get the Edelbrock logo, when it gets tacky, I was going to paint that blue. Um, I think one of the other guys on YouTube, uh, what's his name, Big Paw, did that. Um, on his new intake, he used Chevy Orange because that's the color of his block. And he took a model brush and did that, and it looked really cool, but I just, you know, I fell, uh, fell asleep and then I just didn't really feel like doing it. Um, I was going to use the blue, my truck is a 77, so it had a blue block from the factory, it's kind of an ugly color blue, um, it's like a mix between a dark blue and like a Pontiac turquoise blue, uh, kind of similar to what they used to use on the old stove bolts back in the day, the sixes, but, um, yeah, I just didn't end up doing it, but that's okay, you know, I, this isn't going to be the final motor in this truck, this is more just a, you know, temporary, keep the motor in good shape, seal everything, get rid of leaks, but, you know, it's not the final solution here. Um, maybe someday I'll end up building the block, maybe not. We'll see. But anyway, let's uh, take this outside so you guys can see what the finished product looks like. Um, I will be doing a series on replacing the intake in the truck so you guys can see how that's done with some good tips and tricks that uh, I've picked up along the way. And, um, yeah. So if you're interested in seeing how one of these goes on, by all means, take a look at that. It's out in the sunlight. And again, you don't want to let this thing dry out in the sun, direct sunlight, because it's not UV uh, resistant. Roughness. 